hello learners in this lecture we will see few other commands and we will also try to see how this model has to be named so uh, in the beginning of the lecture i told that this uh, we are we are preparing a, a small only a ground floor structure right let me go back to the autocad drawing and uh, so when i was explaining you so i told you that we are preparing only a ground floor building right so that means practically in the model what should have happened we should have model only one floor right but what happened we have model 1 2 and 3 floors now we have two option since i told it is a ground floor what i can do is that i can delete all these floors so let me try to do that once so what i'm going to do i'll select those story which i don't require right i'll go to the foundation now this is my foundation and this is my one story okay that means from story 2 i don't require it so what i'm going to do i'll click on one story and i'll select this okay okay give me a minute Yeah, let me keep this in plan. Yeah, go to story two only. Let me put this in three D model. Yeah. So what I can do is I can select all this story in this way. then again i'll go back to the third story also and then i'll go to the last story here right i'll selected them and i'll hit a delete button and we'll see whether it will be deleted or not yeah so i'm deleting that so i selected the delete button with the help of a keyboard but okay let me uh, you know unlock the model yeah and now i'll delete them right so can you see that everywhere it is deleted and only one floor we have created right so this is how you need to do just in case let us imagine we are preparing a small g plus 2 building in that case i'll try to bring it back okay so if you want to bring it back there is option called undo here click on the undo so what will happen everything will come back now we'll try to name this floor for that i need to go to edit option there is option called edit stories and grid system hmm? and here we have option called modify and quick add story let us say you want to add one more story over that okay then what you can do quickly go to this option called quick add story and add one more story right so one more story is added like you can see story 5 similarly i'll try to add one more story you can see story 6 is created now we'll try to name them so i'll go to modify or show story data and my base will be my foundation right so i'll be clicking on foundation i'll write it as foundation and then let my story 1 be my plinth level plinth level yeah then my story to let us be let this be first floor let this be second floor now then this be third floor i'll write it in this way third floor okay then let us say this is my uh, terrace portion i'll make it as terrace and let us say i have a small above terrace portion okay it's up to you to decide what you want to write so i'll take it some randomness okay and this is height height of each floor that is 3 meter 3 meter what i have kept and i'll say okay to this this things we are not interested as of now we'll not try to get into this and this is the total height of my building that is 18 meter i'll come to okay and i'll say okay to this so can you see this so this is how it is created since we added another three story what has happened you can see only the grid lines here just in case if you want to add another stories here what you can do you'll go back to that okay i'll go to third floor and i'll select everything from the third floor i'll go to edit i'll go to the replicate option and here i'll go to story so we have created up to third floor right and then we need to add in terrace and above terrace i'll click in this way and i'll say apply to that so what will happen the same thing will come here as well right so this things we i wanted to address so i already explained this now let me try to run this model and check whether the beam sizes and the column sizes what we are given is it sufficient enough to take care of this load that is g plus 4 right you have a ground floor here okay and then you have um, yeah the model is running yeah So the analysis is done. I'll try to run the model. I'll go to design, concrete frame design, and select design combination. They already selected. We have to select this. I'll take it to the other side, and these two things by default they are gonna come. We'll bring it th to this side, and say okay. Now go to design, concrete frame design, and start design check. So we'll try to see whether the 
columns and all what we have given is sufficient enough or not yeah so it looks okay for me from here yeah so even this uh, sizes of column and beams what we have given no they are sufficient enough to take care of the load yeah it's failing here in the first floor these two columns are failing so what we can do no so since the columns are failing we have one option i can make this column pass so what we can do we can try to change the orientation of this column because this column is getting pulled in this direction and also in this direction whereas this direction it is it is also getting pulled right so what i'm trying to tell is so it's a one way of understanding here what is happening so if you look at this column this beam is trying to pull this column here and this beam is also trying to pull this column here so the net moment acting will be will be little less let us say this is 3.35 and this is 3.84 if you detect 3.84 from 3.35 hardly will be left up with fire some 500 mm okay but if you look at this portion of the beam no here it is trying to pull in this direction and this length is almost let us say we'll try to calculate that length okay let us say its length is something 4 meter so that means the orientation of the column should be along the longer span the depth of this column that means i should orient my column in this direction and we'll try to see that i'm not sure whether it will work or not but that is a logic behind that that is why i feel the columns are failing so let me try to do that so what i'm going to do i'll untick this uh, i'll unlock the model once okay because unnecessary you don't have to increase the column i'll tell you two option how to do this first let me select this column i'll go to all stories and now i'll try click on both the columns and i'll go to assign uh, then i'll go to uh, frame i'll go to the local axis let me try to change the orientation of that okay and i'll say 90 degree 90 and say apply okay it did not change we'll try to do it previous selection and apply okay it is we have to change it now make it as 0 degree and say apply yeah can you see the orientation has changed right and now let me run this model once again i'll run this again now let us say whether this column will pass or not right and if it doesn't happen then we'll try to change the size of the column that's the only option left for us so i'll go to design again concrete frame design and start design check and let us say in this time what has happened so can you see that now all the columns have passed isn't it what is the reason behind that because here it was trying to pull in this direction so that is the reason your columns was failing so always as a engineers you cannot keep on increasing the size of your columns just because it's failing so we have to change the orientation of the column as well right now now you have change the orientation of the column right but at the same time you have to go to the autocad plan and just check what will happen if we change the orientation in this way whether it will create any obstruction in the room or not that also you need to see right so here if i change if let me make use of a, yeah so now instead of this column if i keep the column something like this it's okay because it's not creating any obstruction this part will go within the wall and there is no obstruction in the room similarly if i try to change the orientation of this column and if i put the column in this way then also it's not creating any obstruction because here also i don't have problem here also there is no obstruction being created so this orientation is okay then i'll come to the autocad and i'll change the orientation of this column as of now i'm not doing that right so you can go with this way now i'll tell you the other way of doing this the other way of doing this is let us say i'll let us say even after change the orientation let us say this columns were failing okay then what is the option i have then i need to increase the size of my column right so what i'm going to do now i'll put them back i'll say all stories again i'll quickly do that i'm running short of time i'll go to uh, display okay i'll go to assign okay let me first unlock the model yeah i'll go to assign have i selected it yeah i selected that let me go to assign let me go to frame let me go to local axis again and then instead of you know uh, yeah let me make it as 90 degree again and i'll say apply yeah it has changed right and now what i'm going to do i'll try to increase the size of this column so for that i need to define quickly i'll define another se section property so previously we had given a column of 230 by 450 i'll add a copy of this okay same but i'll change the size of this instead of 230 by 450 let me go with 230 by 600 this is the next size what i'm using again it's a m20 grade what we have again it's a m20 grade now this you have to change it to 
okay and rest everything will be same since we have taken a copy of property everything will fall in its place i'll say okay and i'll say okay and now i'll say okay now let me select this all stories and now let me try to increase the size of my column i'll go to assign i'll go to frame i'll go to section properties now i'll say i'll, I'll be applying a 230 by 600 column size and say apply right now it has been applied now let me run the model and now let me see now i have not changed the orientation but i have increased the size of my column okay so as a engineer yes, always first try to change the orientation of the column if it's passing well and good and even after changing the orientation if it's not passing then you have to increase the size of the column right unnecessary we cannot keep on increasing the size of a column yeah now can you see okay yeah, i'll show it here uh, okay in the 3d you can see all the columns are passing start design check yeah you can see it's pink in color everywhere it's pink in color it's pink in color and it's pink in color right so which is the best way so as a structural engineer for me first safety is important for me safety is important the second is for me economical point of view so what i do instead of increasing the size of the column it would have been better if i had kept the orientation in this way right and then what will happen safety is also maintained and economy is also maintained because for the same size you're getting uh, you, i mean your structure is getting plus now what happened you increase the size of the column that is 230 by 450 from this you increase it to 230 by 600 so what will happen here since you are increasing your size by 150 mm 150 mm is you again concrete consumption is also increased right because you require more concrete to fill this concrete I mean, fill, fill this column. That is the reason we don't try to increase the column size unnecessary, right? Yeah, this is the one thing I wanted to tell. Now let me go back again. Again, whatever ex whatever I've explained here, the same holds good even for this particular beam. If you remember, we had we had released the moment for this particular beam. So what I'm gonna do, I'll go for all stories. Now I'll click on this, okay? I'll click on this beam as well. I'll click on this beam. I'll click on this beam as well. And instead of assigning the releases, no? I'll not release the moment. So what I'm going to do, I'll go to assign. I'll unlock it again. I'll go to assign. I'll go to assign and let me go to frame and release and partial fixity. What we had done, we had released the moment, right? Let us say no releases and say apply. Now we'll see whether any release is applied. How do you check that? Go to this option and here your option called release moments. Go to the object assignment and in the frame, there is something called and releases click on that you can see whether the releases has been applied or not yeah so we are not released the moment right now let me try to analyze this model because previously we were getting our beams failed due to that so now i have refixed it and now let me try to run the model and we'll see whether these beams will pass or not design concrete frame design and start design check yeah, you can see the beams are still failing. What the, right? You can see the beams are failing there. Yeah. So what was the reason? Because now I did not release the moment end end moment here. It's creating a torsion on this beam. As a result of this, this beam is failing. Now what option you have? Again, unnecessary. Now I have two options. Either release the moment here, or you have to increase the size of this column, size of this beam. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? Let me try to increase the size of this beam again. I'll show you the difference of all these things. I'll try to create a new uh, beam property section property frame section now this time instead of using a beam of 230 by 380 i'll make use of a different beam let me uh yeah first let me click on let me keep it as all story all story i'll click on this and also i'll click on this and now i'll unlock the model right i'll go to uh, define section property frame sections and let me click on this of beam 230 by 4 380 and i'll go to uh, add a copy of this let me increase the size from 230 to 450 mm okay this is my new size for my beam i'll write it as beam and here you have to make it as 450 rest all things are okay click on okay click on okay and now you, i selected those beams let me keep it as all stories okay I'll keep it as all stories now i'll go to assign i'll go to frame i'll go to section property and now let us say i'm putting a beam size of 230 by 450 only on these two beams since those two beams were failing right now let me try to run the model 
and we'll see whether this size is enough to take care of that load or not design okay let me click here design concrete frame design and start design check yeah now can you see that we'll see i'm not sure yeah now everywhere your beam is passing again it's the same thing again it's the same thing what is happening here since you increase the size of the beam the beam is passing but that is not economical right the the problem was not with the size of the beam the problem was with the secondary beam since the secondary moment since the secondary beams were creating a uh, torsional torsion here these beams were failing so what are the best way to do this instead of increasing the size of the primary beam from 230 to 4 from 230 by 380 to 230 by 450 and 230 by 450 you, you could have simply released the moment of this secondary beams so that uh, you don't have to increase the size of this so again let me do the same thing right so you have two options it's all up to you to decide what you want to do but as an engineer, it's not a right way to unnecessarily increase the size of the beam. So what I'm going to do, I'll first unlock the model. Okay. Let me, un let me unlock the model. I'll click on this. I'll go to all stories. I'll click on this beam. I'll click on this beam and I'll click on this beam. This were my secondary beams, right? Now I'll go to assign and I'll say frame and here release and partial fixity. Now let me release the moment. Okay. On both the side, I'll say apply. Now, can you see, I released a moment and I made these three beams as my secondary beam so that they are not going to put any torsion on this primary beam. As a result of that, my primary beam will pass. Now, what I'm going to do, I'll select these beams again and these beams again. Let me bring the section back to, yeah, section property. Let me bring the section back to 230 by 380 only instead of 230 by 450. Now, let me run the model. Yeah, the model is done. I'll go to design, concrete frame design and start design check. And let us see now what will happen. You can see, so your beams are passing now. The problem was with the secondary beam. That is the reason it was failing, right? So in this way, we have to try to uh, understand the concept behind the uh, structure analysis and the RCC concepts. And based on that, we have to design our beams, right? Right. I hope uh, these things are understood up to here. Uh, we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.